Hi, it's Colleen and welcome to my sewing channel. I am coming at you from a brand new space. Well, maybe not exactly brand new. It's my same space, but I have overhauled it and it looks completely different. I'm so excited to be able to share this project with you. I want to take you through what I did to make my room just a little bit easier to work in, as well as three problems that I solved with the overhaul that I did. I also want to share with you how I saved money in the process and what my plans are next. But before we start, I just want to share one disclaimer. You do not need to have a beautiful sewing room in order to be a good sewist. Let me repeat that. You don't have to have a pretty space. You can sew wonderful things wherever you happen to be. I used to sew at the kitchen counter. I had a small little container like this with my notions. I had my sewing machine and I would have to haul everything out, set it up on the kitchen counter or on the kitchen table. I'd work on projects and then I'd have to clean it all up in order to get dinner on the table for my family. That was my life for many, many years. And actually that's the time in which I acquired most of my sewing skills. So it didn't hold me back to not have a separate space. It was just a little frustrating sometimes when I'd have to shift everything to the side in order to do something else. So when we moved into this house, one of the wonderful things that we found was this space right here, which is a room in our basement that is unfinished, but it is a separate room. It's got concrete walls. It's got insulation hanging out. It has bare joists on the ceiling, concrete floor. Like there's nothing pretty about this room, but it's 163 square feet that I can use just for me and my sewing hobby. And I recognize that that is a privilege and a luxury that not everybody has. So every video that you've seen on my channel up until now has my sewing room as it was before I started the YouTube channel. It just was functional, it was purposeful, it stored what I needed, it gave me a space to work, and it was fine. If I had never gone on YouTube, I wouldn't have felt the need to make a whole lot of changes in this room. However, while I'm filming, I'm running into some limitations and it's causing problems with what I'm able to do on this channel. So let's take a look at what this room looked like before. And then I'll show you what I did to improve it. And then we'll test it out by making a small project. I have always meant to do a sewing room video, like a tour. And this obviously is <laughs> not the best time to do that um, because I'm clearly in the middle of planning and plotting and getting stuff. But you can see this is kind of what I have. It's an unfinished room in the basement and it is fabulous to have a dedicated space. I will tell you, even though it is ugly, it is big and I am glad to have it all for myself. So behind here I've got, you know, really well organized. It's notions and things like that back there. And the walls are just covered in insulation and plastic. And then th these are poured concrete walls here. You know, you can't really nail into them. Long story short, I went ahead and made a diagram to scale of my room. And here are all the pieces of furniture. And I played around with it until I found a layout that I think is going to work well. This over here enables me to have my cutting table away from the wall so I can be on the other side of it facing this way and put the camera here. That'll be better for demonstration purposes and I won't keep walking in front of the lens, which has been a problem. This table will just shift over there. That chest of drawers will shift over this way. This will go in the corner. This will stay here, but my sewing table now will go in between and this couch will come over where this is and all this stuff will get reorganized. But anyway, I think I'm going to give this an overhaul using things that I already have. I'm not going to put the money into drywall and paneling right now, but I need to cover up those walls. So I've got some plain curtains that I just picked up today, but otherwise I am going to use this giant roll of houndstooth fabric back there. It's yards upon yards upon yards of it that I got for about 20 cents a yard several years ago with intentions of using it to recover that little sofa and I'm never going to do that so I'm going to hang it on the walls and I'm adding a pegboard and adjusting a few things but before I got too far along working in here I figured I'd better show you the before. I need to solve a couple of problems. One is there's no window, so there's no natural light. So the light in here is terrible. Number two, I need to be able to stand on the other side of that table and I don't want it just floating in the middle of the room. And number three, if I'm moving that out away from the wall, I need to make some other adjustments and swapping things to a wall where we can easily add an outlet is really a good solution because right now 
The only way I have this stuff plugged in is because I've got an extension cord running on that way. So I'd like to add some outlets along these two walls and get rid of the extension cords, which should help. This is a bin that a friend gave me. And as you can see, it is sun faded. It has seen better days, but it's a great bin to store stuffing and batting in, which is what I've done for quite a number of years. So it's a great little spot and it will fit right under there once this is up against the wall. So first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and paint the outside of this black. I don't care if it's perfect. This is just gonna be for storage and I just want it to look better than it does now, but it's been a great, I don't know what you call it, box. It's been a great box. It's Colleen on iPhone here because my camera does not have a spot to sit very easily in this mess. But this is black fabric and I have run two rows of gathering stitches along the top of two pieces that are the measure from the ceiling to the floor. So you can see there's my two rows. I'm going to gather them and staple them up to that top board that goes right across there. Here's how it looks so far, and I really like it. Um, you can see I've started hanging some pictures. This fabric is so cheap and, you know, I'm not gonna ever use it for anything else. So I'm just gonna pound a nail right through there when I wanna hang something. And if I need to move it, I'll just pull the nail out and move it, no problem. As you can see, I've got black here. That's where I'll stand to do like introductions and demonstrations. I still have concrete walls. I was gonna paint them, but decided to do that another time. This picture, it's actually an old cross stitch that I've had forever. I bought it at a garage sale the very first year, maybe even the first month or two we were married and I was decorating. And I think it's just beautiful. I have painted the frame several times and that is its current incarnation. I'd like to figure out a way to hang it above this antique sewing machine. I've got all my books behind there. The problem is there's not a header board the way there is See, if you look up here, I was able to staple into that board that goes across the top of the wall. There is no such board here. And the joist is a few inches away from the wall. So anyway, I am pondering how to hang that. So now I am waiting on family members to help because all of this is gonna go there. And then this couch and this little round Martha Washington sewing cabinet are gonna come on this wall. And this rug, I thought I was going to be able to repurpose it. It's disintegrating on the back and making a huge mess. And so I have another rug I'm going to pull in here. And uh, this one's going to go in the trash after 22 years of use. Not bad for a $20 rug. There's my black stuffing container. Just kind of hides away and you don't even see it. It's kind of a mess before it gets better, but it is looking better than it did. And I've only had one dead mouse. So... <laughs> long dead mouse because we have pest control and it does a really good job of maintaining that but apparently there was one tucked way underneath something which is gross. I have put in a pegboard and I've got some fun paper things up there mostly it's to cover the gap um, because I'm not painting the concrete walls right now so I do have lots of things to hang up. This is actually all that's left of that giant roll of fabric that is it. <laughs> it's amazing um, and I'm glad to have finally used it because I've been hauling that roll around for quite a while. I did hang some pictures so those two on the right we bought when we were on our honeymoon in 1994 and we've had them forever. Moving this to this wall has got to be the best thing I've ever done. The layout in this room is so much better. I don't know why I didn't think of this in the first place. It's really just perfect and if I weren't filming and wanting to stand behind that, I still would shove that back against the wall. And this rug is one that we had in storage. It's nice to have it back out and in use. You know, does it go with my colors? I don't know. Is it aesthetic? No, but it works. I'm not sure I'm happy with it, actually. I am not a fan of visual clutter, and that's a lot of visual clutter. I can't deny that things are organized, 
and it'll be really easy for me to grab what I want. I've got scissors and clips and pattern weights and some art. I like to clip my pattern pieces as I'm using them to a hanger, so I thought I'd use this antique hanger when the time comes. I'd like to get that art in a frame and hang it down just a little lower. But anyway, I've got my special stuff on my little memo board there. Um, it's just all things that are meaningful to me, but it's nothing that would matter to anyone else. Got some fun stuff. I've got embroidery hoops. I've got rulers, measures, and uh, more rulers. It does free up an awful lot of table space. So you can see I have the full use of my cutting mat and I can go on both sides which is nice. So I've got my little footstool and a portable heater back there for when the winter comes. I did hang up this. Still trying to decide if I like it. It was cheap though, so I can live with it for a bit. And if I don't like it, I can just give it to somebody. It's a little busy, but I did sew a little rod pocket at the top and put it on a rod. All right, so this is a test of my new sewing setup. I am not camera ready, so you will not see me, but I've already discovered a problem. It's fantastic that I can have my camera on the other side. Of the table and I'm going to cut this up to make a little throw. This has already been chopped up into pieces by somebody else. I bought it damaged with the intention of reusing this for some other purpose. I'm going to take a section of this and just make, it's not even going to be a throw. It's going to be too skinny to be a throw, but it'll drape across the back of my little sofa. But this is a problem. I'm going to have to figure out maybe a stand mic or a wireless mic. I'm not sure because obviously this is going to get in the way and I'm afraid I'm going to cut it. I'm testing out new lights so I can see already this is much better. I'm not casting a shadow on my own work, which was a problem I had before. I would stand on the other side of the table. The light was up and behind me. There was no way uh, to not get a shadow on my work, but this is much better. was just enough usable quilt to stretch across the back of my love seat here and it is folded in half so there's enough fabric to pull over your legs if you want to sit and read and have a cup of coffee <laughs> read a pattern make a plan whatever so it really turned out nice This is the darkest corner of my sewing room. So you come in through this curtain here and you have the armoire. And on the other side of the armoire, I have a broom and a dustpan as well as my ironing board. If you've seen my video on fabric sorting, you've already seen this armoire. So go ahead and check that out. But I have bolts of fabric stored in there. Up above, I've got just some things that are meaningful to us. I have my main squeeze, Vincent Van Flamingo right here. And above that is a antique spool holder. On the top shelf, I've got a glass dish full of wooden spools and you'll see there's thread and stuff on there. You cannot use that thread. It's rotten, but it sure looks pretty inside of the jar. And I have these giant spools here that I picked up at antique stores. Those are really inexpensive. So I have all of my ironing tools, my pressing hams, my clapper, starch, pressing cloths, that kind of thing. And then behind the iron is a hem marker. So anything to do with ironing is here. Plus I have a few more antiques right there. And my son gave me the rainbow turd because that's what boys do. Next we have my sewing table. I have shown this before on my channel, but I have two filing cabinets topped by a hollow core interior door. And on top of that, I have cutting mats, which is great for measuring things right at the sewing machine. I have these two little raised tables to bring my machine up to a better height for my neck. I have my serger. And then these two lamps were purchased along with the other lamps in my sewing room from a hotel liquidation company. And basically when hotels 
redecorate, they sell off all of their old furnishings. So I bought all of these lamps and painted them black so that they would match. And I also made the shades. I've had several people comment on the shades and I have talked about them in a previous video, but basically it's a shade that I have decoupaged old sewing patterns on top of. And then around the top and bottom, I glued some like binding tape or bias tape. So they're really fun. They all look like a set and you know, they've got that little sewing detail on there, which is great. The nice thing about these lamps in particular is because they are hotel lamps, they have an outlet on them. So on each side of my table, I have an outlet on top of the table, which is great because if I want to plug in an iron or a vacuum cleaner, glue gun or something like that, I can do it right here on my tabletop and I don't have to crawl under the table. There's a organizer that you've seen in my other videos. It used to live on my cutting table and now it lives on this table. So I've got all the little things that I like to have handy when I'm working at the sewing machine. I can just reach over and grab them. Here is a thread holder that I found at an antique store and I did paint it black. I love this. I like this better than the spool holders that fit on a wall because it sits on my table. It's easier to access and it's just a fun, colorful addition to my table. Up above is a wonderful hand stitch tapestry that I found in a shop kind of unexpectedly. I wasn't looking for anything and ran across this and it's just beautiful. So there's little mirror bits sewn in periodically and it's all embroidered, just beautifully done. So I love that it brings a lot of color into this space. Here's a look at what's in these drawers. This top drawer has a basket of all my machine sewing needles. I have canned air. I've got the tools for my serger. Um, I have some sewing machine oil, all of my extra presser feet. This is piping and we have hem tape here and then I have rickrack. And then down below, as you saw in my pattern sorting video, these are all of my sewing patterns. In this drawer, I can quickly and easily reach my little um, tools that don't fit anywhere else down below. And I may move this. Um, this is all of my serger thread. So it kind of makes sense that it would be on the other side next to my serger, but I have it here. So all of my thread is kind of in one spot. Down below, I have additional files. These are all like paper crafts. I've got some businessy stuff, extra file folders, some notepad, things like that. I did end up buying a small shelf so that we can move the Wi-Fi up and mount it on the wall because all of that stuff used to live on the top shelf here. I have covered the wires right here. They're very bulky behind there, but I've at least hidden them from view so you don't see yellow and orange and white all tangled up. Here I have my nice antique jars and you can look up based on the logo and determine how old your jar is. So these are pretty old and I will put the age up on the screen because I don't remember right offhand how old they are. But anyway, I did a video on sorting all of my buttons and these are three of the jars that hold buttons. Down below I have these handy little drawers which are great for holding all those bits and pieces so I've got them marked. This is for bobbins. This is all hand stitching supplies. Down here I have pins of all kinds. Here I have fabric marking equipment and the final thing is just some extra cutters, exacto knives and that kind of thing. These drawers here are all for making jewelry. A fun chicken from my mother-in-law, which could be a pattern weight or a pin cushion. And then behind there is just something to keep track of humidity and temperature. Uh, Lazy Susan with all these containers. I found it at Goodwill and it's perfect. I've used it for a variety of different things over the years, but its current life is button storage and they're all sorted by color category. And these are Keurig K-cup holders that I found at Goodwill. So when they show up at Goodwill, they are $2.00. So if I see them, I buy them because they're great for organizing. So I have, again, overflow thread. I have extra shears, things I don't use very often. This is for jewelry making. In this top drawer, I have craft jewelry and beaded trim. And then down below is ribbon. That is an old type case. So they would sort um, all of the different movable type for a printing press in a tray like that. Of course, now everything's digital, so that's kind of a nod to the old days, and I am a writer and editor, so I enjoy having that. I've actually had it for several years and have not had an opportunity to hang it until now. Here's a piece of artwork from a friend of mine, which I love. So much fabric, so little time, and that's fitting above my rolled fabric stash. I did buy the 
basket underneath. I have my dress form here. Over here, you can see I hung the bunting from my very first video up on the top of this wall. So it's nice to see it finally up and on display. I have another flamingo. So that one and the orange one came from some friends of ours uh, as a fun little joke, and I'm happy to have them on display. This picture was my grandmother's and it was in her bedroom for as long as I can remember. So I'm really glad to have it here. That's my 1923 hand crank Singer sewing machine, which I love. And below that is a beautiful vintage doily with hand worked crocheted edging. Gorgeous. And it's a perfect fit for the top of that dresser. This chest of drawers was something my grandmother found in a Salvation Army, I think. And she gave it to us early on in our marriage. We got married in 94, so we've had it for quite some time. And again, this has been used for many things over the years, but currently it's for storing fabric. Reds, pinks, oranges, yellows, browns, greens, blues, purples, black, gray, white, and cream. There are pictures. I think I talked about them earlier in the video. Here's my cutting table with my giant mat on top. This storage unit with miscellaneous salvage pieces here. So um, this is the bottom of a dress that I found. It's vintage. I've got some vintage trims, a um, couple of antique pieces that I can maybe repurpose. These are all my vintage fabrics. The quilt that I made came from in here. All of this embroidered stuff can be used for crafting. Right there is the case I painted earlier in the video and on top of it I'm storing extra camera equipment. Here is my bead collection. On top of it patterns of fashion one and two. I do like the black pegboard because it hides the ugly concrete wall but it just is a lot going on. I wanted to show this little detail so I have this basket. It was just a spice shelf that I bought at the thrift store but I hooked it up onto my pegboard here and I made these little liners so that I could store small things in there without them falling through. That's where I keep my tailor's chalk and fabric marking things. And then over here is where I keep my wonder clips. I just used some of the quilt and I had this little bit of gold binding that's not enough for anything else. Here I've got pattern weights and then next to it I have a notepad pens, fabric marking pencils, and that kind of thing. I did end up hanging this piece of embroidery. It's just a vintage linen that I had in my stash, and I'm not going to put that out anywhere, and it's too nice to cut up. So I happened to think, hey, that would fit just perfectly up there, and I found an extra tension rod. I hung this black curtain a while back on a shower curtain rod, and then I hung some additional tension rods back here. This right here is medical table paper. It's really cheap to buy a roll of it on Amazon and it's perfect for mocking up patterns and making adjustments. And then down below, which doesn't go on a rod because there's no room in the middle of the roll, is Swedish tracing paper. So once I figure out what I'm doing on the cheap stuff, then I can transfer it to the Swedish tracing paper, which is pinnable, sewable. It doesn't tear like the paper does. It's just great stuff, but it's expensive. So I wait until I'm sure and then I transfer it to that. Then up above, I have some gridded plastic, which is great for making patterns for small things. This is butcher paper, so it's waxed on one side and plain on the other. That makes great stencils, so you can cut out something and iron it on and it will stick because the wax will melt and bond with your fabric. You can glue, paint, whatever you want to do inside of the areas that you've marked off for your stencil and then peel it off and there's no residue left. So I like to have that on hand for some projects. Here's some more plastic that I can use for um, making templates. I have hangers, which are great when you're in the middle of working on projects, all important cleaner and paper towel. That little bin has my snowman craft, which I'll show some pictures on the screen. Camera equipment kind of gets stored here. And then you'll see I have an empty bolt and some empty cardboard for making bolts when I get fabric. By the way, if you have a smooth plastic surface like this. You can write on it in Sharpie and then if you change what you want to put in this drawer, you can scribble over that with Sharpie. The new Sharpie dissolves the old Sharpie and while it's wet, you can wipe it completely away and relabel your drawer, which I did just recently. This is Sutash braid that I bought in bulk at a dollar a pound place, which was a great thing. I have woolly nylon for my serger, which I do not use very often. And all of this came with the serger when I bought it off of Craigslist. Here's some overflow serger thread. And I have those big zip ties from my stays project. Down below, I have cording and twine. Below that, 
I have UFOs, baby bibs, and burp claws that have been cut out but not sewn. And I have sold dozens of sets of those in craft fairs, but I'm not doing craft fairs right now. So I just have a lot of them that are already cut out and ready to go. If I need a baby gift, I can just come in here, pick out a set, stitch it up in a hurry, and it's ready to roll. When I want to paint or craft, I've got all my supplies in these two bins. So this is where I keep glue, staple gun, hot glue, fishing line, that kind of stuff. Back at the top here is a collection of snaps. Uh, these are covered buttons. And then down below, hooks and eyes. I will never run out of hooks and eyes. Here is my miscellaneous drawer. I've got an elbow patch, some drapery stuff, stitch witchery. Down below is anything to do with needle craft. And below that is where I keep all of my twill tape. Down below that, I've got lots of trim. And then this one's labeled trim as well, but it's actually full of lace. Some of it is vintage dead stock. I bought this at the dollar a pound place. So if I do insertion lace, I have the miles and miles of lace that you need to do that. And there's a lot of vintage stuff down in here. So really pretty old tatting and crocheted edging and just beautiful old stuff. And in this last stack, I have findings. I have stuff for corsets. And here I have nylon snaps. I have some bra findings, hooks for the back and things like that. Here are some small canvases and painting tools. This is florals. This is all fabric marking. So I've got like waxed tracing paper here. I have some extra French curves underneath here. I have elastic and Velcro in this bin and paper crafts in this bin. It's nice that I can have it out of sight with a curtain dropping down. Over here is that vintage needle point that I showed you before. I did end up figuring out a way to hang it from that joist because I can't nail into the concrete, but I hung it on a ribbon down there and it looks pretty nice. And there I have the craft from my button sorting video, which I do like quite a bit. So I made a little bow to hide where I duct taped it. <laughs> I had to duct tape it to the wall. Here's my collection of sewing books, minus the patterns of fashion. And I have reduced this down even from the last time I showed you. So all of my reference books are here. And then I have several books like these here and the American Duchess books that have sewing patterns in them as well. I'm using antique irons to hold them up and they're sitting on this old sewing machine that my friend gave me. So currently I'm waiting in a long queue at the repair shop for someone to rewire this. But now you see I can just open the lid. It opens up over this way and I can easily use that sewing machine when I want to. Down below is a pile of mending and alterations that I need to get working on. Hi there. I have my mirror which is great for when I need to fit stuff. And it's sitting on top of this little Martha Washington sewing cabinet that a friend gave me. So these two side pieces are empty. They're, they're actually a deep kind of a drawer. They're or not drawer, but you know, a bin, I guess. They're empty, but these drawers are full. Right here is all binding, single fold, double fold, and blanket binding. This is all lace tape, as well as some um, very tiny lace trims. I find this at vintagey places. So just really tiny, tiny laces. And then down below, these are zippers and they are bundled by size. So if I'm looking for a particular size of zipper, I can dig through there, find the bundle and then pick the color that I need. On top, of course, I've got more flamingos because that's a theme if you haven't guessed. And then I have this antique egg thing which is you put twine in there and you bring the end of the twine up through the top and you can access twine when you need it. Here is my little love seat. And there is the quilt throw that I made earlier. Those three pillows, I bought the pillow covers on deep, deep clearance at a restoration hardware outlet. You know, nothing is cheap there but I think these were about $4 a piece. So I bought the pillow covers and stuffed them myself. I don't know if I'll like that there forever, but it's good enough for now. My rug, which you saw earlier, here is the sewing box that I also showed in my sewing machine tour video. And I can use that as a place to set a cup of coffee while I'm on the couch. And then of course I've got storage inside of here, some antique stuff I have the vintage sewing machine parts, just odds and ends. So both of the sides open up. Finally, what you see behind there is actually an antique ironing board. I've had this for years and I always wanted to have it on display in my sewing room. I'm not sure I like it. I may end up getting rid of that. I bought two of these three light 
LED plug-in remote controlled track lights. There's one there, it plugs into my center light and there's the other one. And I cannot believe how wonderful it is to have task lighting. If I turn off the center light, you can see that the track light does a really great job of shining right down on my workspace. And then you can see over here how much light that track light puts down on my table and I can shine it in my face. So it's going to solve a lot of my lighting issues for videos. And the nice thing is it's remote controlled. So I can turn it off and on with the remote. I can go 50%, 100%. I can dim it to whatever brightness I want and they were cheap. $31 a piece and we did update the light fixture up there, the round piece. This one has a plug-in for $62 plus a $5 light fixture. I have infinitely better lighting in this space. The other thing that's nice is that my bank of fluorescent bulbs is independent of my LED track lights, which is great. Here's another little detail. I asked my son to make me a pull on his 3D printer. I said, I want something decorative for that pull cord. And this is what he made for me. <laughs> Isn't that cute? So I can just reach up and pull that on and off. So thanks for joining me on my sewing room tour. This entire makeover cost $160 and about half of that was spent on lighting and wiring. So um, changing the overhead lights, putting in some extra extension cords, getting power to the corners that I needed power in. That was about half of my budget. The rest of it was spent on a new shelf for our Wi-Fi, fabric that I needed to complete the walls in the room because I didn't have quite enough on that giant roll that I showed you at the beginning. And then I bought the pegboard and the hooks to go with it. I really wanted to do something a little nicer in here, but as you know, lumber costs have gone up through the roof and a piece of paneling is about twice what it used to be. If I had wanted to do this whole room in paneling, it would have been hundreds of dollars, and that's just to buy the pieces of paneling and install them. My solution to use the fabric and what I already had means I was able to complete this entire wall makeover for under $20. And it should be a lot warmer in here. This should add a layer of insulation, right? Because there's the fabric, which is not terribly thick, but it's trapping air behind it. Um, so it should provide some insulation between me and the outside. So this wall behind me is an exterior wall. If you look right behind here, and as you've seen in all of my other videos, that's just insulation. There's nothing between me and the outside except for this. So in the winter time here in Missouri, it can get really cold in this room. The lowest temperature I saw in this room last winter was 57 degrees. And you can't work when it's 57 degrees, especially when you're standing on freezing cold concrete. So it's just uncomfortable. I have a space heater, but it's not enough to keep up with how cold it gets in this space. So in addition to this, I made a small, um, about four inches wide little draft catcher out of two layers of quilt batting and some fabric and just stapled it right along the bottom to hopefully catch any drafts that are coming in. So I'm really interested to see how much that helps this winter <laughs> and hopefully it'll be warm enough that I can work down here comfortably all year round. There's duct work in here, but there are no vents for heating. So that might be something on down the road that we could add is just, you know, a couple of vents and this duct that goes over my head in order to get some warm air back here. But otherwise I think it'll be okay. The budget was really reasonable given the changes that I made in here. And I was able to use a lot of things that we already had. So pulling in a rug from storage was a great money saver. Moving some art pieces around that I already had, bringing in some antiques that I had that were waiting for a place to be on display. All of those things just made it extra homey in here and feels fresh and new, but it didn't require me to spend any money. Even if it's not to your taste, I hope that what you see here has given you some ideas of what you can do to make your sewing space a little more practical and usable and maybe even a little prettier. Thank you so much for coming with me. If you like what you see here, be sure to subscribe. My next several videos are going to be quick and easy crafts that you can make in time for the holidays. And then we'll go back into historical costuming after that. So be sure to follow me on Instagram so you can keep up to date with what's happening on this channel. Thanks a lot and I'll see you next time.